Yesterday I threw some pieces off the hump and I saved the clay. I just put it back on the wheel and recentered it. And now I want to trim those pieces. Well, last night I forgot to cover those pieces. And it was over 100 degrees yesterday, so it's bone dry. What do you do? Well, you could trim this off and leave it as is if it's just going to be a test piece. You don't want to trim it when it's dry. It wears your tools out. It, it's not a good thing. So what you do is you let the clay absorb really, really slowly. Now, just dipping the piece in water just gets the surface wet. It's going to chip. It's not going to be plastic again. To get the clay plastic again, what you do so you get an old towel, this size little washcloth works, get it wet, not drippy wet, but wet, and then you wrap the piece in that towel. Now the longer you leave it, the softer it's going to get, so be careful about this. You don't want to leave it overnight or you don't want to leave it for too long. Check it every so often. Now this morning I did that to the brother of that piece and took it out after a couple hours and this is what I have. This clay, it's absorbed the water from the towel and check this out. It's plastic again. And I can put my fingernail into it. It's ready to trim. Now, if anything, this is a little bit on the soft side, so I could leave this out a little bit, right side up, but I'm going to go ahead and trim it for you anyway. Now, I could put it on the wheel, put wads of clay around it, and trim, put the next one on the wheel put wads of clay around it, and trim. Get a hump of clay, get a lump of clay, and match the inside contour to the curve up here. So, we do that right now. So I'm just gonna center this. And this is good, because if you have different size pieces, different shapes of pieces, you can adjust it. It's also really good in that when you're trimming, that rim isn't touching the wheel. So you could have a carved rim, you could have a really, really paper thin rim, and it won't get damaged because the clay is gonna be supported on the inside. So I'm gonna make a little dome here. As roughly the same size and curvature of the inside of this bowl. So that's about right. Now this is important. This is plastic clay, that's leather hard. If you don't clear that slip off, they'll stick. So just take the metal rib and scrape the slip off the surface of that dome that you just created. Now, some people will put a piece of plastic on this. I don't. If you go away, say you go have lunch, take it off. Don't leave it on there. Because remember, it'll absorb the water from the dome and they'll become one again. So now, I've got the hump of clay centered. So all I need to do is tilt this. until the foot is centered. Now, another good thing about this, I forgot to check how thick the bottom is. I can just pop it off, check. Okay, I've got about that much. I want to start trimming about here, so I'll mark it. Mark where the foot's going to be. Got enough for a nice foot. Put it right back on. 
Now, I'm not pushing down yet. I'm just centering it so it's still a little loose on there. A little bit more. There, that's good. Once you have it centered, give it a little push. That's all you need to do. Now, unlike trimming on the wheel head where it's hollow here, there's clay right up against the inside of this. So you won't be able to tap it to guess, guesstimate to get an idea of how thick it is. So what you'll need to do is check it carefully. But then remember, you can always take it off and do it again. Do a little bit more. And then as you're working, you've got another pot. Just pop it onto this. If it's a little bit wider, you can widen the hump up. A little shallower, you can shallow up. And then when you're all done, you haven't wasted the energy on the hump of clay, you can start throwing more pots off of it or just make one big pot out of it instead of having to wedge it up. So. Now remember this piece was thrown off the hump. And I'm going to be using this for glaze testing. So one thing that you can do to make this really nice for glaze testing is make it so you can grab the foot. Sometimes a foot that is very elegant might have a nice straight line to it. Uh, for what I need this for, I'm going to put a groove. And that'll do two things. That'll give me a place to grab it when I'm glazing it. Also, if that glaze that I'm testing runs, it'll stop there. Acts like a little dam. Make sure you burnish it. Now, I threw this off the hump, and remember, what you throw off the hump, it's soft here in the center. So remember, I made a big point of compressing, compressing, compressing that inside. So you want to do that after you've trimmed on the outside. And you can do that either by just going cross hatching, go back and forth with something hard. This is almost like a finger. This works really well. Or just go over it with a heart, the end of the stick and compact it and compress it. Make sure you don't have any sharp lines. I'll smooth off the little grog marks. And sign it. Take it off, you just pop it off, check it, feel it. I need to take a little bit more, I can always put it back on and trim a little bit more. So that's how you trim off the hump. And all these little trimmings, remember you just grab them right away while they're still plastic. And recycle them. An easy way to recycle them. Get them into kind of a ball but without squishing it really tight. Dip it in some water and squeeze it out like a sponge. And then leave it. And in about 20 minutes, that'll be plastic clay again. So that is trimming off the hump. Thank you.